Okay, hi everybody, and welcome to another one of Mayan's summer classes. Uh, tonight we're very excited to have Sabrina Berger teaching for us. She's a longtime Mayan teacher and teachers throughout the Boston area. Um, we're always happy to have her teach classes for us. Um, tonight she is teaching a class called Introduction to the Life and Teaching of Rebbe Nachman of Breslov, um, which I'm sure many of us are always fascinated to learn learn for the first time about Rebbe Nachman, and every time we learn an introduction class about him, there's always so much to gain. So um, without further ado, Sabrina, take it away. Thank you, Lana. Okay, so um, before I begin, can everybody see me well enough and hear me well enough? Okay. Um, I very much like to have uh, sessions where people participate, and I know that is a little bit uh, complicated with Zoom because we have to be muted, but at any point, if you feel that you have a comment, I very much will welcome it. I will be teaching, uh, going through the texts a little bit at a time to allow for a small discussion at every, at every point. And, um, you know, we'll see how, how we manage the group and how we manage everybody's participation, but it's very important to me to hear from you um, and your reflections and your reactions to the text. So um, this is like I I very I'm very excited to do this this session to introduce people to Rabbi Nachman is a Rabbi Nachman is my main teacher and a definitely a passion uh, you know like Eretz Israel in my life I draw much 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 wisdom from the teachings of Rabbi Nachman and I hope that today we'll be able to get a little bit of that through the teaching that I chose. The Torah that I chose to focus on today is a very long, long piece uh, from the Sefer Likutei Moharan, which is the main body of work of Rabbi Nachman. Uh, and I chose two um, very short excerpts in it that I find are very relevant and kind of telling of the type of issues and preoccupations that Rabbi Nachman was involved with. For those of you who don't know anything about Rabbi Nachman, I don't know a lot of the people here and I don't know what you know and you don't know, I'll just say like a very brief introduction. Rabbi Nachman was the great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov. He grew up in the house of the Baal Shem Tov, who was the originator of Hasidut. Um, he it was the great grandson through the, through the mothers. He was the, the son, you know, from the daughter of Rabbi of the Baal Shem Tov, and then the daughter of the daughter, and then Rabbi Nachman. Uh, Rabbi Nachman is unique in the sense that he really anticipated the existential issues that we deal with in, in modernity issues of meaning, issues of despair, issues of joy, issues of mental health. And he used a variety of mediums to. Uh, to teach his Hasidim. Uh, he, he, like any Hasidic Rebbe, he, he taught, you know, on Shabbat and Motzei Shabbat and his uh, disciples, especially Rav Natan of Nemirov, recorded his teachings and that were compiled in what we have today as Likutei Moharan. We're going to see Likutei Moharan today, a, an excerpt of that Torah, Torah 22, and then we're all going to see another, uh, another teaching of Rabbi Nachman from another book called Chaye Moharan, which is a complete of his sayings that are very autobiographical and part of my intention to do that is because I feel like it's very important to, to recognize that Rabbi Nachman always taught from a lived experience and towards a lived experience. The teachings of Rabbi Nachman are to be applied always in a very personal way to the circumstances that we find ourselves in me as a woman living in Corona today, living in the States today, a mother of her children, like all of each one of us with our own uh, circumstances. Um, Rabbi Nachman had about 200 Hasidim during his lifetime. He was, didn't have a very, very large following by any means when he was alive. Rabbi Nachman died at the age of 38 years old. He was a very young teacher. He became, he started teaching at, at his bar mitzvah. That's the, you know, the official beginning of his uh, career as a Rebbe, which, you know, and, uh, and he died at 38 years old, like very, very young. Um, and today, as we know, there's thousands and thousands of Hasidim that, you know, go to Uman every year, you know, and in Israel is a, is a very, very potent and vibrant Hasidut. Um, 
I'll leave it for now for that. If there's any questions, uh, I'll open up for questions, but let's just really jump into the text because like, I'm always afraid that I'm not going to get to everything and, and, uh, and I really want to. Okay, so do I need to screen share? I'm going to screen share. I don't know who has the text with them, but I'll, I'll be doing the screen share. One participant can share at a time. One participant can share at a time, which is me. And why am I not sharing? Hold well on. It's not sharing. Can you see that? You don't see the screen share because it's not coming no, up. We don't see it. Right. So why is Ilana still here? Ilana, yeah, are you still here? here? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't. It's. I see one person. One participant can share at a time, but it's not. Click on the, 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 the option. Arrow up. It's not letting you share. I don't see, I don't see my screen here. Let me see until full screen. Speaker view. Oh, now I think maybe now. Hold on. Okay. No. I see it and it leaves. Why can't it's just maybe because there's a. I'm not. Mm. Okay, so do you want me to share it and then? Please. You can... Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Okay, and then I think you'll, I'm making it so that you can also move it. So no one else move the screen, just let Sabrina move it if she needs to. Okay. Um, sorry, one second on my end. everybody uh, okay okay so now I can't see almost anyone can I make this a little bit smaller all right we'll have to figure this out you could probably do grid share on a grid show grid view on yours yeah but I can't see anybody everybody either okay I see about six people at a time, I guess. I don't know if there's any way to see more. I'm doing grid, I can't see anymore. Okay, so I will be talking to those that I see. Uh, I'm sure that when you start talking, you will come out in the screen and we'll take it from there and we'll do the best we can uh, with what we have. Okay, so Rabbi Nachman is going to focus in this lesson on the concept of Nasser and Ishma, which is a concept that you know, for some of us, is a very well-known concept, a key element in the in the story of receiving the Torah. And when I and I'll just open up for you when I say Nasev and Ishma, how, what do we know about that concept? Anybody would like to kind of like review it very very briefly, and not to bring in all the midrashim, but yes, at least get us a sense of like what is Nasev and Ishma about in the most basic level. Anyone? What does Nas, Amy? Yeah. Sure. Well, it, it yeah. was um, the the acceptance of Torah Mishinai. Um, this was the declaration of the people that um, it it implied that um, because we we want to engage in this personal relationship with Hashem, um, we're going to accept what He's giving us, and then you know we'll we'll learn about the particulars later. But Nas said we're going to do it first, and then Nishma. Exactly. Beautiful, right? So there's this sense like a very strange, in a certain way, we will do before we understand. We will trust, you know, and engaging in a process of action, of activating our action before we actually understand what does this mean. So it's putting action before understanding. So that's, you know, in the order of Nase, first we will do, and then we will hear. Nase as in doing, and, and uh, Nishma as in hear even though Nishma means to hear, but it really means to, to understand. So Rabbi Nachman is going to um, go very far away from this like, very, very traditional understanding of Nasev and Nishma. I thought we would spend a little bit of time looking at some other commentators, but I think I'm going to jump right into the text um, because I, that's what I am most interested in. So let me see how I do this. So I'm going to move this here and go down. All right, so... Why can't I go down now? Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe you need me to scroll down. Where do you want me to yeah. take? Uh, I want to go, you, I want you to go to the second page, which is the Likutemoran, directly to Likutemoran. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you, Alana. Thank you for staying and helping me out with the technical. Happy to do it. Okay, so everybody sees the text, right? So I'm just gonna be reading it very, very slowly and, and pausing for a second for you to, and you have the translations on the bottom. I'm sorry, it should have been side to side. I think it would have been easier for this, but you know, for next time. Thank you. All right, so here we go. So Rabinach is going to give a very different understanding of Nasev and Nishma that has really, we'll see what it has to do and what it doesn't have to do with this concept of um, doing and then understanding. Ki Nasev and Nishma hu bhinat nistarot ve niglot. Nasev and Nishma is related to the concepts of hidden, hiding, uh, hidden and revealed. Nase hu bhinat niglot. Nase to do is an aspect of that which is revealed. Hainu ha mitzvot she efshar lekol echad lekayem lefi madregato. That is to say, the mitzvot, the commandments that we are capable of doing, that each person is capable of doing according to their level. Venishma i bhinat nistarot. And nishma, we will hear, is an aspect of the hidden. That which is uh, higher or more elevated and hidden from the person. That he's not able to do a serve Hashem. He cannot serve Hashem with that. I'm going to pause there. Okay. What, what, how is Rabbi Nachman, just from the get-go, defining Nase Venishma? What is nase? What is nishma? How is he defining those concepts? He's saying nase is what? Nase is that which is? The things that are explicitly told us to do. Uh, well, let's read very carefully. Not exactly that. Is that Yael? Yes. Yeah, not exactly that. Similar, but not exactly. I want to be very, very precise. What is what is nase? What we're capable of, no? Say that again. What we're capable of. What we're capable of, exactly, right? That which we are, which is, is is accessible to us, and from and that we can do, that is accessible to us that we know how to do. I know how to ride a bike. I know how to read a book. I know how to speak. Those are the actions that are related to the sphere of Nase, that which is revealed and that I can activate myself in it. Um, and then Rabbi Nachman is also saying that are the mitzvot that I can do according to my level, right? So any mitzvah that I can do according to my level is on the level of Nase. What is on the level of Nishma? Precisely. It's, it's what's out of reach. It exists, but it's out of reach. Exactly. It's that image of gavoa mimen, or it's, it's, it's above you. It's out of reach. It's something that you really either don't grasp or cannot have access to or don't know how to do or don't know how to understand it, that which is outside of your grasp. So he's already giving us this dichotomy between Nasev and Ishma that doesn't have to do so much with doing and understanding, but that which is accessible and unaccessible. That which is in my reach, in my level, comfortable, accessible, that I can, I can do, and that which I cannot. Okay? Now he's going to add, Le Mashal, and now he's going to give us a very interesting example that I don't know if that we would like necessarily um, predict. Le Mashal. It's a kol mitzvah. Yesh devarim she svivot ha mitzvah. For example, in every mitzvah, in every commandment, there are devarim. Uh, devarim, I think he's saying words, uh, statements. Yeah, he, it's, it's translated statements, words that accompany, that, that surround the mitzvah. Ki milvad ha-tzivui ha-neemar ba-Torah lekayem ha-mitzvah, because on top of the tzivui, of the commandment that is explicitly told in the Torah, to fulfill the mitzvah, yesh od laze dvarim batorah. There are many other things in the Torah. For example, kagon vaydaber Hashem el Moshe, and Hashem said to Moshe, v'shar diburei haTorah shesvivot haMitzvah. And 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 as and there are other things like that that are surrounding the Torah 
that are surrounding the mitzvah that don't necessarily speak about a particular action, but, but are surrounding the mitzvah. Okay. What is he implying with this? What is, what is that? Imp why, what, like, what is he saying with that? Okay. So yes, there's a lot of words that are misavib la mitzvah. What, what, what is the significance? What do you think would be the importance of such a statement? It seems like, um, even if we can't figure out what it is, everything's there to tell us something. Yes. And so, um, you know, we might be able to understand, uh, don't gather six on Shabbat. But when it says, and God says to Moses, don't gather six on Shabbat, maybe we don't know what this, you know, what that, what the God said to Moses part, which is his example, is telling us that we should do. Right. So you're saying a lot with that, John, because what he's saying is that, okay, so we know that we have the six, 613 mitzvot. But now Rabbi Nathan says, well, wait a minute, those are the mitzvot that we know, but beyond those mitzvot that are explicitly stated in the Torah. And as we know, it's not so simple because then we need Chazal to come and tell us how to do, not to pick up the sticks and how not to cook on Shabbat and how to light the candles and all those things. But leaving that aside, he's saying you should know that there's another aspect that is surrounding those mitzvot that also are relevant for practical reasons not just conceptual, but practical. And those are hidden, and it's not so easy to determine what is the practical application of a statement like, by Daber Hashem el Moshe. Now, I have a question that I don't know that I have an answer to, but I, like, to me it's interesting that he chooses that example. Why by Daber Hashem el Moshe? What, is there anything that you guys like think that is like relevant or like interesting about that example? I do. I'm wondering if you do too, or if you're doing the same way that I do. What would be the significance of pointing out that example? Because he could, he could have talked about it, like, I don't know, the stories of Abraham, all Genesis is that, right? Like, Sefer Bereshit is all stories. There's very little mitzvot in Sefer Bereshit, right? But why by Daber Hashem and Moshe Lemo? Any, anything? Could it yes. mean, could it mean that it's an assurance that is, that what we read out of it is what God intended when he spoke to Moses on the mountain? Wow. Okay. So an assurance that what he spoke in the mountain is what is, is that is what he's meaning. Like a sense of like, beautiful. Um, beautiful like that that's a like a sense of like okay i know where i'm standing i know that this this was said beautiful i'll tell you the way that i kind of like to me because i very much live in the world of relationships for for better or worse to me when he's talking about by daber hashem and moshe is telling me two things one is that there's an there's something about communication here transmission um, encounter and that that is a mistal there's, there's a mystery I think in encounters and there's a mystery in communication and there's a mystery in how we relate to each other and and there is a lot of avodah a lot of practical applications to know how to do that very well and it's very messy and very difficult most of the time and in a certain way, I think for me, maybe because that's, I think so much about these things, it's like, whoa, there's, there's something here that Rabbi Nachman said, look at this, pay attention. Don't just dismiss it just because it's not an explicit mitzvah. There is work to be done here. Now we'll see what is the work, right? Like, okay, fine. So there's an aspect that is hidden, an aspect that is revealed, an aspect that is accessible, one that is unaccessible, one that is gavoa, one that is here. And then there's this I, the image of something that is surrounding the mitzvah, something around the mitzvah. Now let's continue. Hold on, I need to get my phone because I can't see my, phone, my time in the computer because of the screen. Here we go. Um, Ah, uh, okay. And now he's going to say, the avodah that exists, right, the application, the service 
to Hashem that exist in those Diburi HaTorah, in those words of Torah that are surrounded in Mitzvah, Hem Chinat Nishma. As we said, those are the aspect of Nishma, of we will hear. Chinat Nistar, an aspect of Nistar, Ki HaMitzvah Be'atzma Anu Yecholim Lekayem, because the Mitzvah, when it's explicitly said, we can explain, we can fulfill. No, stay there, Ilana, please. Ach HaAvoda SheYesh Be'elu HaDiburim En Anu Yodim, Be'ze Chinat Nishma, Chinat Nistar. Okay, this we already went through. He's clarifying the fact that those words, those words, those utterances, those statements, that are, in my opinion, about communication, have to do with nishma, have to do with the hidden aspect of, the, of that which is, takes some effort to acquire. We'll see why I say effort, because it's gonna go into that. And now he's going to add a whole other layer that I think is very telling in terms of uh, an, an introductory lesson about Rabbi Nachman, and you'll see why. And this also corresponds to the concepts of Torah, Torah, and Tfilah, prayer. Nase we will do, is an aspect of Torah. Why? I won't say why. Hainu aniglot, the revealed. Masha yodalekayem, like the mitzvot. That's the things that we, that's Torah. Torah is doing, right? Benishma. Hem Pchinat Nistarot, as we say, and Nishma is an aspect of the hidden, Pchinat Diburei HaTorah, an aspect of those words, those statements of the Torah, those, those words of the Torah, Shehem Diburim Shel HaTorah SheSvivot HaMitzvah, that those are, it is repeating, right, that are the words of the Torah that surround the mitzvah, Shem Pchinat Nistar Kanal, and those are the aspect of the hidden, as we have said above. That he does not know. He does not know how to serve Hashem. Hashem Yidbarach in those places. And that is an aspect of Tfila. Shehi Dvekut. Tfila is attachment. Deep connection. Attachment. Dvekut is another better word for Dvekut than attachment, I think. If anybody finds it in the in the uh, attachment, will do for now. Sheid vekut ki shmiat talia beliba. As it says in the, I think it's in the Tikkun Ezor. It says in the Zohar, in the Tikkun Ezor, an aspect of a part of the Zohar called Tikkun Ezor, uh, that the shmiat, this nistam aspect, is talui on the lev. Is talui is is rests or is dependent on the heart. And it says in Melachim Aleph, and you shall give to your servant a lev shomea, a hearing heart. So you might find very say that again, label. Yeah, you might find very interesting. I came across this in a journal who was describing an interview she had with Mother Teresa. Uh -huh. And I, when I heard or saw what she had said there, I said, if I didn't know, I would say that some Hasidic, Rebbe, Hasidic Rebbe said this. He asked her in the interview, when God speaks to you, what does he say to you? And she answered, he doesn't say, he listens. Oh, wow. And the interviewer said, and what do you say to him? She said, I don't say. I listen. I listen. Beautiful. Left your mouth. And I thought Beautiful. that it's, it's, you know, I would, if I didn't know that it came from other Therese, I would say, some Hasidic Rebbe said. Beautiful. So what is a Lev Shomea? Let's just pause there for a second. You know, so Rabbi Nachman is adding a lot of other concepts here, right? He's moving from the Nistav, from the accessible and unaccessible, to a dimension of the relationship. You know, Nasev and Nishma, as we know, in Hebrew grammar, every time that we have a vav, we're connecting two concepts. We didn't say nase, well, we did say nase earlier in the narrative, but now we said nase and nishma. Now we put them together, right? So nase and nishma come together. There's a, there's a concept that are inter, interrelated to one another, right? We, we're in this interplay between the hidden and the revealed. 
we'll see more about that connection, how we go from one to the other. That's the next section of this of these teaching. But right now he's adding another concept, which is the concept of tefillah. And in the concept of tefillah, he's saying tefillah is hidden, is an aspect of hiddenness of the tefillah, and is also connected to the lip, to the heart, and is also connected to how do we serve Hashem through tefillah, through hiddenness, and the lev shomea. What, what are those elements? Why is Torah and tefillah connected, like Nasev and Ishma? Why do we need both? Why not just Torah or tefillah? Why, why are they interconnected? What is, what is the significance of saying they're both connected and they connect in the heart? Why is that? The heart is very important for Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman talks about the heart in stories, in his teachings. It's a very fundamental aspect. According to Rabbi Nachman, a, a vital heart, a heart that can listen, I think, is a heart that, can, that is alive, that can really listen, that is activated. That is, that is pumping, that is like mamash alive. And Rabbi Nachman is saying, a lev shomea is an aspect of shmia, with an aspect of nista. You hear something that is hidden. That's part of our service of Hashem. Our service of Hashem, according to Rabbi Nachman, is not just doing mitzvot. It's doing mitzvot and it's being very meduyak with our mitzvot, but it doesn't end there. There's a nase and there's a nishma. And there's always an interplay between the two. And there's always a relationship in which we're going from Torah, that which is accessible, that we, we understand, that we, we can access, to the, to the hidden. There's, a, there's always a, a play and a connection between the two. Any, 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 I want to pause for a second to kind of hear you guys. The Lev Shomea, I want to hear what you say. If anybody hasn't, shared yet. I would like to hear somebody who hasn't spoken. So is the heart hearing God or is the heart hearing other people? Beautiful. Other people are oneself. You know, if we're talking about Tfila, Elev Shomea and Talia, you know, Talia Beliba, Kishmiya, Talia Beliba. I think we're talking about listening to our heart. I think Lahit it's Halel. Yes, right? Reflexive, exactly. Right? So it's, it's, I think it's more internal, right? It's hidden. We all know that the deepest depths are the internal depths. It's very hard to understand the world, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure everybody understands what I'm saying these days, like what is going on, right? But it's a lot harder to understand inside. And Rabbi Nachman is giving us an invitation to say, Nasev and Ishma, receiving the Torah has to do not just with the externals, but also with the internals. And we have to pay attention to the internal. Without, not at the expense of the external, but yes, appreciating the internal. Sabrina, can you hear me? Yes. It's I Cheryl. I see you. Hi, Cheryl, sweetie. I can't hear yeah, you. I can't I'm, I'm you. still putting my kids to bed, so I, I'll get on video in a, in a bit. But um, I just think that there's something so deeply beautiful about this concept um, because it just reminds me of the, of the discernment that is so necessary. And it's like it's, it's easy to be on the the do, 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 do. And he, it's just reminding me of that, that, um, that balance, like you said, to go internal, but it, but the going internal, there's a discernment process, which is the hidden part. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, the discernment just keeps coming up as a word related to the hidden. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to use your comment, Cheryl, as a, you know, springboard to go for, forward. So this Torah, I, again, I did a little bit of like, you know, making it succinct so that we could do something together in this introduction time. But um, I wanna, Ilan, if you can bring me down to the second. Could I just ask you one small question? Absolutely. Um, Who's talking? At least hi, I don't see um, you, but I. Hi, I'm Susanna Heschel. Hi, Susanna. Uh, it's under hay. Or there's a distinction, it seems, the mitzvah, kya mitzvah ba'atzma, you see that? 
Yes. Is mitzvah on the one hand, ach avodah. So is there, dis- mm-hmm. I just am wondering in, in Nachman's, in general, in his writing, does he make a distinction between mitzvah and avodah? And, and the other question was, ein anu yodim. And I wonder if there's a special, if he mean, what he means by yodim, if he means that in a particular way. I mean, not just simply we don't know, but if it has something to do with the way we know or mm-hmm. a certain kind of knowing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how to answer that on, you know, I think Yediya, uh, as we know in our tradition, is a very deep word of deep knowing. It's not just knowing, as we say it in English, I know you. I've actually, you know, right, like it's like a, no, a knowledge that is a knowledge of a, de- of a depth and connection, implies connection and attunement. So, um, you know, we don't know them. I think, it, I, think it's, I think it's just reflecting, I think, and I'm sure I'm not saying the whole picture, and I think your question is better than my answer, but I really believe that what he's saying is like he's pointing us into the mystery that I don't know, and being okay with I don't know, and that a lot of an avodat Hashem is not knowing. Yeah. That we, if we think we know, we're in a really bad shape. And when we think we don't know, we, we beat ourselves down, but that's the real place of like, um, of growth that only by not knowing you can access deeper and higher levels. And Rabbi Nachman, as we will see in the next element, in the next Keta, is a very dynamic teacher. Like he's always, and we'll see this dynamism like <laughs> unfold in, you know, you'll, I hope we get there with the timing and me rambling, but um, um, we'll see how do we get, because it's, it's not deterministic in the sense of saying, well, but you don't know, you don't know, you'll never know because we're limited and, and, it's, and that's what it is. Like that's very not ever what Rabbi Nachman says. Rabbi Nachman says the not knowing is a petach, is an opening for knowing. And then that knowing will become a not knowing. We'll see that coming up. I, like, I'd, I'd be curious if you want to come back on board and see if there's anything that I said resonates. And also with the next Keta, if there's anything there that gives some kind of an answer to this kind of like interplay between, between the two. So I'm going to jump back in the text. So now he's saying, so Nasev and Ishma is not just a concept that exists when we receive the Torah, and it's a concept that relates to our Avodat Hashem and Torah and Tefillah. He says, no, that applies in every level, which we'll have to unpack what that means, in every level and in every world. It's a very evocative language. What is every world? And what is every level? What are we talking about? So there's an aspect of Nasa and Nishma in every level and in every world. Because every individual in his level has an aspect of Nase, has an aspect of reveal. Meaning, i.e., Torah, mitzvot, revealed. And an aspect of Nishma, of we will hear, Shibhinat Nistarot, Bhinat Fila Kana. Right? So we already made that kind of grid or that kind of chart. We have Nase that corresponds to Torah, that corresponds to revealed, Nigle, and then we have Nishma that corresponds to Nista, that corresponds to Tfila. But now he's adding this new level. This applies at every level of existence and experience. In every situation that we find ourselves, we will find in every world that we find ourselves, in every encounter, in every circumstance, there will always be, he's saying always, you will find an asset, so now he's starting to go a little bit deeper into the practical aspect of this concept. It's not just like, okay, conceptual, existential. Now he's saying, okay, let's bring it down to practical. Because a person that arrives to a higher level than the previous one, 
מהנשמה שלו, בחינת נעשה. Because when you go from one level to a higher level, the נעשה becomes, the נשמה becomes נעשה. That which was hidden to you, that which was גבוה, that which was outside of your reach, becomes accessible, becomes something that you can apply. ואזי יש לו בחינת נשמה אחרת. But what happens when you have reached a new level and that which was difficult for you or hidden from you now becomes accessible and applicable and doable and yours, an expression of yourself, now you don't end there. Now it becomes a nishma acheret. Now you get to another nishma. When you think that you have arrived, I, you know, like I always used to say with when the kids were little, every time that you think you have it with the kids, it's like, okay, I got it. Like then in a different place altogether already. And like now you're like again, okay, now I have to figure it out again, right? So, so similarly here, you arrive, you think you've arrived, you think like, oh my God, yes, I got it. And then it says, no, there's another nishma. That comes, but on a higher level. Vechen mi darga le darga, and so from level to level. Vechen kol adam lefi madregato, and in and so every person in their level yesh lo pchinat naaste benishma. Now these these very three lines are very fundamental in the in the uh, teachings of Rabbi Nachman. It's talking about dynamic growth. It's talking about the fact that we're always moving. And that we're always going from one level to another level. That we never stay static. Rabbi Nachman used to say to his Hasidim, Rabbi Nachman had a very hard time learning Torah when he was a child. He couldn't really understand the Mishnayot. So he, you know, like there's many stories about Rabbi Nachman as a child. We'll see one, when, you know, we'll see a story about, about him referring to his childhood. But he said to his Hasidim, he said, you know, um, and, and by the way, Rebbe Moran is one of the most complex and difficult. You know, like I, I was teaching it last week and I was saying, saying I, I don't think I could teach 95% of Likute Moran. I could not. I, there's, there's absolutely no way that I could access it. Like, you know, I, I, I learned, like right now there's my class of Likute Moran that is happening tonight that I'm not joining, but but I, I could not teach it. It's like a very, very complex text that brings together references from the whole Yam Shel Torah, from everywhere in Torah, right? So Rabbi Nachman was not somebody who could not learn, but he said, I, I arrived at my ability to learn and my ability to grow spiritually, not because of the great grandson of the Bad Shem but because I, I worked on it really, really hard and I davened for it really, really hard. And then he says, and you, you, my Hasidim, my 200 Hasidim, you can be as, as, as exalted or as big as I am. All of you, each one of you, you just have to work on it. You just have to daven and want it. So the aspect of the tzaddik, right, like the righteous leader, you know, that is so fundamental to an aspect of Hasidut, according to Rabbi Nachman, is not because you have a very high neshama and you're very special and you're very elevated, not at all. It, everybody has the capacity to reach high levels. It's midarga ledarga, from level to level, to level, to level, to level, and on and on and on. kol adam, שילך מדרגה לדרגה, מהעולם לעולם, ומעולם לעולם. And then he's giving you the imperative, and he's saying, וצריך כל אדם, every person has to do this, every person has to go from דרגה לדרגה, from level to level. You'd never stay in one place at once. That's the directive of the Rebbe. He's saying, מדרגה לדרגה. מעולם לעולם, עד שיזכה בכל פעם לבחינת נעשה ונשמע גבוהה יותר. Until you are able to access an aspect of נעשה and נשמע that is higher, שיהיה נעשה אצלו בכל פעם בחינת נשמע. That the purpose is that every נעשה, should be, every נשמע should become נעשה. Every time, that that's the goal that you have set for yourself, not to stay as like, okay, 
I'm static, I'm me, I got it, I know it, I don't need to ask more questions. There's, there's something very healthy about knowing oneself and knowing our, you know, who we are. The Rabbi Nachman is, is like insisting, Tzarech kol adam sheyilech, that he should walk and go from level to level to access, to make from the Nishma and Nase, so that there's the new Nishma and the new Nase. So I want to stay here for a second and get a little bit of feedback about the what what is necessary to be able to go from a nase to a nishma to a nase to a nishma in this very dynamic and and like kind of like uh, building on itself structure that he's setting for us as a practical um, it's a how do you say count it's a how do you say it's a um, the practical it's a Anyone? Those of you who speak Hebrew, which I know you're there, <laughs> no help today. All right, so we'll stay with Etza. This is an uh, advice. Thank you, thank you. Advice, right? Um, how do we do it? What is necessary? What are the elements that are necessary to get to that? What would you say? What qualities do we need? It seems to me that by doing, we change, we become changed. And therefore, we have to listen anew. And our new and deeper self will hear from the same words, new levels. So that it's an expansion by our actions. Beautiful. Beautiful. I would say it's, a, it's an expansion by the interplay between our actions and our listening, right? Mm -hmm. that, that we don't stay just in the action. We use the action to spring forward ourselves into more deeper listening, right? And yeah. then that becomes the, the new action. So, so we need like a, we need to stay attuned to listen and we need to stay attuned to our actions. Right? We need to be very practically oriented as well, not just in our heads and not just in our intentions, but bring it down to the, to the practical. Any other qualities? And I'm just going to say it because to me it's like so fundamental. You know, like we, 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 we Rabbi Nachman said, you know, I, I learned this recently and I was blown away by this idea and I've never heard anybody else say something like that. He said, the, the, um, he said it in passing in a comment in, in another session, he said, what makes a Jewish person is a person, a Jew, is a person that is constantly growing. That's a Jew. Now, to me, that was- Say that again, I didn't hear, I didn't hear. A person- he said, who, a Jew who is constantly growing. Growing, I see. Growing. Not only somebody who does, I mean, what would you say, what would you think a Rebbe is going to tell his Hasidim who is a Jew. You would imagine, do mitzvot, do go to the mikvah, daven, do tzedakah, I don't know, right? Serve Hashem. That's, that's what we're used to. And I'm not saying Rabbi Nachman doesn't say that also. He says that many, many times. But he says that the, 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 what is a Jew is a person who's constantly in a growth uh, pattern, always. That's a Jew. I find that like so inspiring and so refreshing. That's what a Jew is, the ability to grow, the ability to change, the ability to do tshuva, the ability to like, to not get stuck, the ability to like renew ourselves. That is a Jew. And I and think that's, please. I feel like that's the essence of Na'aseh and Nishma. The Na'aseh is the doing and the Nishma is is the connection, it's the internal um, analysis, and, and that's what brings us um, to the next exactly. level of, of exactly. NASA. Exactly. That's why I love, that's why I wanted to bring this Torah, because this Torah talks about growth in such a perfect way, very clear way. You know, and it's such a fundamental element in the teaching of Rabbi Nachman. Grow. Allow yourself to grow. Now, there's a trick to that. 
because what is implied in growth? I think what is implied in growth is a certain humility. I, I don't know enough. Or there's more to go. And that's hard. But that's, you know, if we were to choose one Nida, what character trait that defines spiritual development is humility. And therefore, Moshe Anav Mikol Ish. Mikol Adam Mikol Ish. Mikol Ish. Right? Right? Well, often, often growth comes from going through very difficult experiences. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other element, right? The, 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 the role of suffering in growth. <laughs> Falling off the bike. For sure. That's for another another time, but for sure. We don't like it. I don't like it very much. I prefer not to grow like that if I can avoid it. But it's it's part of human experience. Everybody can attest to that. And I think perhaps um, the the Talmudic principle that you're not required to finish the work, but you're required to start it. I you're think it's even stronger than that. It's not possible for you to finish the work. You're, you're never done. Beautiful, so true. So true, because exactly, uh, thank you for saying that, because it's true, it's never ending. You never end. But there's no defeatedness of saying, oh my God, I want to I wanna arrive. Rabbi Nachman is, is posing, life is not about arrival. Life is, is about being constantly in the process of like yearning. Rabbi Nachman and Tfilah, you know, Tfilah is a huge concept in Rabbi Nachman as well. And Tfilah has to do with yearning. And yearning has to do with that which you don't have. And that which you're like looking to acquire. That nistal, that nishma, right? And it's never over. But like we could understand it as like, oh my God, I want to arrive. And I think we do have arrivals. We have Shabbat. We have places where we get to a nishma, to a nase, And we feel like, okay, I've, I've acquired a place. But don't think. <laughs> that you're going to stay there for very long. Rabbi Nachman is saying, there will be another Nase and another Nishma that come after that. I want, to, I want to go to something very beautiful that I brought for you to end um, and to, to close with that. So Ilan, if you don't mind bringing me down to the next text, uh, to the next page. Uh, no, up, up, up. There, yeah, there, thank you. So this is a, a very different uh, sefer, Sichot Aran, the, the speeches or the words or the conversations of Rabenu Nachman, Harab Nachman. Uh, and um, these are Sichot, you know, conversations that he had with his Hasidim and he talked to them in a more, less focused about Torah and more like, you know, just conversations. Breslov has one of the most recorded material of, of <laughs> situations, um, lifetime, everything that surrounded the life of Rabbi Nacha was very much recorded by his Hasidim, especially by Rav Natan. And this is Rav Natan, his main disciple, telling us one of the Sichot of Rabbi Nachman. So he says, Kacha. And he, he talked a lot about his, the, the level of, um, of yira, of awe, and kedusha that, that he had while he was a child. And he was very quick and very, and very holy. And this is what he means to be zariz and kadosh, like the holiness, the holiness, whatever that means, which is a whole other topic. What does holiness mean? Shaya matchil kama paamin beyom echad, haynu shaya matchil liyot ish kasher. So he that he would start multiple times in a day, and he and and haynu and and that is to say he would begin to be a kosher person. Shemeata yavod et Hashem itbarach, ve'achar kach, ve'oto ayom atzmo, nafal mize. So he's saying, I'm not translating this, uh, correct, like I'm not pausing correctly, but 
שמעתה יעבוד, so he said, he wants, so, okay, I'm going to start again. שהיה מתחיל כמה פעמים ביום אחד. He, he would start every day from the beginning, from a new, from this moment, in order to be a kosher person. שמעתה יעבוד את השם יתברך, that from this moment, from now, I will serve Hashem. ואחר כך, באותו היום, and it would happen, that later on, in that same day, נפל, he would fall, נפל מזה, ונפל לתאוות אכילה או כיוצא, like he would fall into eating too much or something like that, וחזר, and then he would come back, והתחיל באותו היום פעם אחר, אחר, שמאותו השעה, and he would say again to himself, that from this moment on I'm going to start again, and I will be a kosher Jew, a kosher person. וכן, וכולי, ונפל, וחזר, והתחיל מחדש. And he would fall, and he would come back, and he would start again. I want to stay there. Rabbi Nachman is describing to his Hasidim a process where, as a child, and I think he, he you know, as an adult as well, he would נפל, וחזר. He would fall and come back. And then he start again. And he would say, from now on, I'm going to start again from this moment. Now, why am I bringing this to you? Because I think that this is the practical, the, it's called להתחיל מחדש, to start again. Oftentimes when we fall, first of all, oftentimes when we fall, we feel so bad about ourselves that we don't start again. That we spent a lot of time beating ourselves up for the things that we did or the things that we said and we spent, and we stay there. We ruminate, we overthink. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I said this, I said that. Rabbi Nachman is saying, no, don't do that. We all fall. I fall. I'm a tzaddik and I fall. And you will fall too because it's the nature of a human being to fall. But when you fall, what you can do is to move forward and say, okay, so I fell. I have to do tshuva, for sure. I'm not like being in la-la land and not recognizing. But I fell, and now I can start again. And that is l'atchil mi'chadash, and that is how we go from level to level. We don't pay it, we don't stay stuck in the fallen. We always move forward. We always get up and move ahead. Now, it's not an easy thing to do. But when you bring in consciousness of, and tell yourself, Ani matchila mi chadash, I'm starting again anew. Not better, not necessarily better, new. I'm starting again. I'm doing it again, second time. Kasach sheni. Right? Like we have tshuva. We have to allow ourselves to say, I'm starting again. And that is the mechanism through which we can grow. Because if we stay stuck in the fall, we don't move forward. So um, it's 9-12. I'm aware that we're almost at the time, at the end. So I want to pause here and end here in a certain way and open for questions. So I'm going to exit the... Uh, Ilan, if you can help me exit the... Um, the, the text. I, we didn't finish. There's more to say, but I just I feel like it's more important to me to hear your reactions than to actually continue with more material, which is there. But we'll take it at Khan. This is good enough. Um, so, what are reactions? What do we What do we take with us? How do we can How can we apply this to our lives, to our growth, to our curiosity, to our sense of um, humility with ourselves, to our shmiya, to our hearing, to our knowledge that we're always going from level to level. And that folly and vulnerability is part of it. And the Rebbe was saying that to his Hasidim, I fall, you will fall too, and it's okay. What do we take with us? Anyone? I will wait. Someone um, mentioned a ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's possibly, 
a misleading way to look at this because you can do and move backward <laughs> and you still have to engage in the same process. So I think the important ingredients are the humility and the faith that give the possibility of focus. Beautiful. I very much agree with that. <laughs> we didn't talk about faith. There was no mention of faith, but it's a key element for sure, especially faith in oneself. Anyone else? I had a thought when we were talking about the difference, we didn't talk about the difference between levels and worlds, uh -huh. but it struck me that level has several meanings, that you are at a different level than somebody else, but there are also different levels to your experience. Yes. But each one of us also has our own and creates our own world that's unique Absolutely. because of our perceptions. Yeah. And yet the Torah is valid and is commanding in every single one of them. And yeah. that it's pushing us to recognize that the Torah isn't something that applies as if it always applied everywhere and you didn't have to think about it. It always applies everywhere because you have to think about it. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. Very well said. So true. I think it's related to by Daber Hashem and Moshe Lemon to that, you know, yeah. that mystery. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I'd like to say that I, I, um, I like very much that you chose this one of the Sichot to bring with this particular teaching. Um, because it strikes me that um, he, when, when we talk about um, that which is hidden uh, uh, in, the, in the teaching that you brought, that is, there's the mitzvah and then there's that which is hidden, uh, the avodah. And what Nachman is also suggesting is that uh, his approach to a human being is not to look simply at what the person has done, but to look more deeply at the going up and going down and the tr striving again and so on. And so too, this is how we should be judging ourselves, not in terms of what it is we have done or haven't done or done incorrectly or which mitzvah we failed uh, to fulfill, but rather uh, on, the, uh, on the level of that which is nista, which is hidden, yeah. uh, which is what goes on in the heart. So uh, I, what I appreciate about Nachman is his sensitivity to, to the inner life of a human being. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a, uh, it's a constant uh, practice, right? Like uh, that sensitivity is, is um, developed through tefillah, through bodedot, which we didn't talk about. But, you know, it's like Rabbi Nachman's contribution to putting very personal tefillah on, on par with, with uh, traditional tefillah, to develop that sense of self that is internal and that, that is in relation, intimate relationship with God and with Hashem. Yeah. Okay. I had a, um, a quibble, basically, that when you were talking about, you were saying to be a Jew is to change. To grow. To grow. And I am always aware of the potential for getting resentment against Jews qua Jew. And that that saying, if we were to use it outside of our closed sectors, people would say, well, I grow too. Um, it's not just, I change too. Um, the Jews can't assume that that's only us. I think I would make it more careful that 
if you are a Jew, you had better be changing and growing <laughs> with every day, that that's what it is to be faithful. <laughs> well said. And when other people are also changing and growing, they remind me that we're human and that to be human is a very Jewish thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I like that to be human is a very Jewish thing. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I agree. You know, how can I say that non Jewish yeah. people don't grow? Obviously, they do grow as well. But to define Jewish, Jewish as growth is, is a very, new concept for me yeah. per personally okay yeah. label we can't hear you you have to unmute if you're talking to us <laughs> this who has ever learned Rabbi Nachman before in this group just give me a heads up me, yes Shoshana Susanna yeah anyone else not so much. I took the class because I hear people okay. talking about Rabbi Nachman all the time. You do. And I didn't know, and I wanted to come to know. A little bit, yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's much to learn. <laughs> yes. There's much to learn. Yes. So I don't typically like to pray in English. I've kind of resisted it, and a friend gave me this oh, book yes, yes. and it's, it opened yes. English oh, prayer as well as Hebrew. I don't know if it exists in Hebrew. Yeah, it's a beautiful opening, heart opener, concise to the point and <laughs> and <laughs> absolutely, yeah, I love Ellen, it. Ellen, what is the book? I didn't see the title. The Gentle Weapon, Prayers for Everyday and Not-So-Everyday Moments. Oh, thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Very accessible, very real, very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbi Nachman is very real, you know? Very real. That's what makes it very... Um, Can you hear me? Hard. Say that again? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, good now, because I can hear. You confirmed some ideas that I had, uh, but those ideas uh, would bring us into a completely different direction of things, which have to do with what's the fundamental difference between a rationalist and an irrationalist, and the uh, example of why all Hasidim are basically irrationalists uh -huh. in that sense, and so on, but that would bring us quite a bit of horror. Yeah, <laughs> I think I wouldn't be able to follow. <laughs> like, like, for instance, when, when you mentioned uh, uh, Rav Nachman's uh, approach to uh, Nasev and Ishma and so on, and I was thinking, for instance, of Rav says in the Gemara, says, V'chi yechpat l'ashem im nishchot meha tzavar or nishchot meha orev. Does it make any difference to God if we do it this way or that way? So all these extras that Rabbi Nachman talks about in Sabiv Rav, who is basically a rationalist and a Masnagid, I would say, even though he lived before the Hasidim Masnagid, but his basic attitude towards it was that uh, there aren't all of these, these uh -huh. things, Misa Vivler, said, those are only things that you yourself are giving to uh -huh. it, and the purpose is to itself at the Briot, and so on. Uh -huh. And I once posed a, a, a basic sort of dichotomy it, 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 everyone is pointed to one direction or to the other, but they're not at necessarily at the extremes. They could be okay. a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but a, everybody is basically one way or another. Either you see the feeling of Kedusha and Hashem in knowledge or in ignorance. Uh -huh. The stress is in the Hashem and so on. And Rav Soloveitchik, who himself is in the rationalist tradition, his way of 
of teaching, for example, and there's a greatness in teaching is, is he makes a complex thing simple. And the greatness of it is that afterwards you say, it's really simple. Why don't I think of it myself? <laughs> and and didn't it, that, that, that's the way he looks at it. That's not the way you look at Rav Nachman, by the way. That's not the way you, you could appreciate Rav Nachman. Uh, he didn't make a complex thing simple, you feel. It's just that he was aware of the complexity of the thing. But the, I, uh, I, I remember thinking with Rav Soloveitchik, he himself says, where man asks why, dear Hashem appears. Mm -hmm. See, it's in the question that it appears to him. But Rav Lichtenstein, or the one, <laughs> for example, they would say, knowledge, uh, understanding Hashem, and appreciate feeling Hashem, is in Yidiyat Hashem. Right, that's a wrong it's an understanding. Yeah. As opposed to not an understanding. Rav Nachman is definitely on the other side. Yes. Definitely on, and he also evaluates knowledge in that way. Rav Soloveitchik feels that, you know, where men feel that their Hashem appears, but he nevertheless evaluates knowledge and how simple you make it. Not on how complex you make it. Uh -huh. <laughs> the relationship between simplicity and complexity. That's Rabbi Nachman liked very simple simplicity a lot. The what? Rabbi Nachman liked simplicity very much. But he seems to judge everything in terms of complexity. Yes, exactly. Because Rabbi Nachman is very complex, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he um, whatever is the complexity and the simplicity is like a very deep topic in Rabbi Nachman. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the okay, desire to, and curiosity to uh, want to learn more about Rabbi Nachman. There's mm -hmm. definitely much, much, much to grow and much to learn. I have heard of him. I've heard of the punctures who scream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Nananachim. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I never yeah. really heard much of it. Is it Rav Nachman, the, the Kafka is always told the stories? Was that Rav Nachman? Yes, yes, the stories. He said to his <laughs> student, like, I can't, I, can't, I can't continue like this. I can't, uh, I teach you Torah and you don't change and you don't grow. Now I'm going to start telling you stories because stories are the things that awaken people that are asleep. So, mm -hmm. so he started telling stories at the end of his life and uh, they're very wonderful and incredible stories. Very, very deep and oof, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you 